Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today's shiur is um, about the laws of Tisha B'Av that falls on Shabbat, like this year, and instead we fast on Saturday night through Sunday night, instead of, obviously, the only time we fast on Shabbat is Yom Kippur. Now, what is Tisha B'Av? Tisha B'Av is the worst day in Jewish history. It's the day that all of the Jewish men from between 20 and 60, because they accepted Lashon Har about Israel, were destined to die and to wander in the desert for 40 years. It's the day that the first temple was destroyed by the Babylonians. The second temple also, the third um, Clematity was that the third temple was destroyed by the Romans. The fourth horrible tragedy that happened on Tisha B'Av was that the city of Betar, hundreds of thousands of Jews that lived in the, in the Jewish city of Betar were murdered and slaughtered in cold blood and the, wor the last tragedy was that the Roman emperor plowed the city of Jerusalem. Even after the temple was destroyed, he, he uprooted the foundations of the city of Jerusalem, and especially the Temple Mount. So for those reasons, five reasons, we fast this Saturday night. Now, this year is a little bit unusual because the fast starts Saturday night, and especially Tisha B'Av is technically on the Shabbat, so we throw it off, we push it back, behind, uh, we push it to Saturday night. But the five, the seven things that are forbidden on Tisha B'Av always stand. We can't eat or drink. We can't shower or wash ourselves with either wa hot or cold water. Husband and wife are not allowed to have intimate relations. They have to separate their beds like when, she, like when she's in Ida. There's no rubbing oil for pleasure. You are allowed to put on deodorant. Or if you have eczema, you are allowed to use your medicine if you, your body itches. But for pleasure, we're not allowed to use oil. We do not wear leather shoes. And... We do not say shalom to each other because shalom means peace and this is the day of the destruction. And, it's a and last but not least, we do not study Torah and Talmud. And we only study the, the um, parts of the Torah that talk about the destruction of the temple or are very, very um, sober, like Eov, the book of Eov, the Midrash of Echa and the places in the Talmud. Now, this year, so many people ask me, how is it different? First and foremost, we know that usually we go into the fast with Saudam Afseket, and that's a very, we sit on the floor and we dip our bread in ashes. We do not have that at all this year. Actually, this year is based on uh, Rav Ovadia, Chazan Ovadia. It's very clear that Tisha B'Av, I'm reading it in the Hebrew. Since this year, Tisha B'Av really should, uh, is, uh, we, it's uh, pushed off. Sauda Shalishit, it's a big mitzvah to eat Sauda Shalishit. You could have the most fancy meal, like a wedding, like Shlomo HaMelech. You can eat meat and drink wine and everything, and you could uh, have it amongst friends. You could have a uh, hundred guests at your table for Sauda Shalishi. None of those laws that happen on other years apply. So over here in the year 5,575 in Los Angeles, California, the fast on Tisha B'Av always starts at sunset. Sunset this year in 2015 here is approximately at 8 o'clock. So you pray Mincha earlier and you go and have your Sauda Shalishi, and you could have all the delicacies and meat and wine in the world. There's absolutely no problem. Just 
approximately, at the latest, around 7.55, you should have done Birkat Amazon and washed out your mouth because at 8, you're not sunset, you're not allowed to eat anything anymore. Now, Havdalah is the other very unusual thing this year. First of all, you know, we're not allowed to wear leather shoes. Rabbi Vadia says that, let's say you had your Seuda Shalishin shul and you couldn't schlep back and forth. So you're allowed to keep your leather shoes on until right before Barechu of Arvit, of the night of Tisha B'Av. If you went home and you had Seuda Shalishin at home, now you want to walk to shul, you don't have to immediately at sunset take off your shoes, your leather shoes, your Shabbat shoes. You could wait 20 minutes and then put on your dampai sneakers, whatever, um, to come to shul. And it's uh, recommended that they start Arvin a little bit later than usual so people can go change their clothes. A lot of like rabbis or people, they don't have a custom to wear their ties because they're, it's a day that we are, we mourn and we are uh, mourning the destruction of our holy temple and Jerusalem. Now, m very important halacha. On Saturday night is a very big mitzvah usually to do what? Havdalah. This year there is no Havdalah Sunday night because we're not allowed to... Saturday night, I apologize. Saturday night there is no Havdalah because we cannot drink the wine. So we, it's very important to say in the uh, prayer, in the silent prayer, Shemona Esrei. But the only thing that we do right before we finish, we want to start reading Megillah Echa, the um, Shaliach Sibur brings a light Havdalah candle and we say Baruch Atah Hashem Olam Bore Me'ore Ha'esh. So the only thing we do on Saturday night is we say the bracha of Moreha Ish right before Megillat Echa. There's no besamim. We don't smell uh, fragrant herbs or the besamim this year. And also, something to keep in mind is we will be, we must do Havdalah Sunday night. We're going to get to that in a second. Now, also something different this year is that usually Saturday night we say Ve'yehino Am Shuva. This year we skip that. Saturday night we don't say Shuva. We just go straight to Va'ata Kadosh. Now women also have to be careful if they don't come to Shul the night of Tisha B'Av because it's Shabbat we weren't allowed to light fire so they should say for themselves now if somebody's sick and is allowed to eat on Tisha B'Av obviously he would have to do Havdalah and the only thing he wouldn't do would be smell the um, the herbs now when when do, when will we do Havdalah? on Sunday night before we open our fast around 8.45 for Los Angeles, California this year, 5775, like 45 minutes after sunset, then you just say Havdalah on grape juice or wine without Moreha Esh, the candle, and without uh, the Besamim, the, thing that, the things that smell, the herbs or Hadassim, or whatever that smells good. Another thing to keep in mind is, Rav Avadia Yosef's opinion is, that this year, since really Tisha B'Av is not falling on the day that it needs to, women that are pregnant, standard procedure is that nursing and pregnant women fast on Yom Kippur and Tisha B'Av. The other fasts, there are, patur from, they're exempt from. Now, this year, since Tisha B'Av is not falling on its authentic and real day, it's falling on the 10th of Av, which parenthetically, I think it's important, and Rabbi Yochanan says that the second temple that you see behind me was really mostly burnt on the 10th day, so it's interesting. 
It may be appropriate that Hashem made it that we fast, but Rabbi Yochanan says that if he was in the time of the uh, Sanhedrin, he would have said we should fast two days because the second temple, the majority of it was burnt on the 10th. So the 10th is also a real horrible day on any day of the year. But any Tish Abav. But Rav Abadi's opinion is Mihu Betish Abav. I'm reading Chazan Ovadia, Arba Taniyot, page 60. Shechal b'Shabbat mitchel la'achar Shabbat ha'merun l'Shem la'echol. So this year, unusually, Rav Avadia Yosef's opinion is there are those that are more stringent, that women do not need to fast, the ones that are nursing and are pregnant. Why? It's similar to the Shiva Sarvetamuz and the other fasts that they're usually absolved from. But a big caveat is, even if you're sick, God forbid, or you're pregnant, or you're nursing, you should just eat and drink the bare minimum and not pleasure, have delicacies or like ice cream. Because that's how Allah the Shulchan Aruch brings that even those people that are, heaven forbid, like even children that don't need to fast on Tisha B'Av, but they should feel, we should really feel in our heart of hearts the terrible, terrible um, pain that the Shekhinah is, the Shekhinah, it's, it's hard to say such words, but when the temple was destroyed, it's God's manifestation in this world on a crystal clear and evident way was God was kind of thrown out of His house and we don't experience God's miracles in a crystal clear way. So it's every second that the temple is not built, it's a terrible Chilul Hashem. And the Shekhinah, the presence of God, is in uh, is uh, like in terrible, terrible um, pain. So may Hashem truly help us through loving kindness and ahavat chinam. What destroyed the temple was baseless hatred. If we love each other and respect each other and look at each other favorably for no rhyme and reason, Bezat Hashem, this should be the last Tisha B'Av and we should see Mashiach Zidkenu. Don't forget to subscribe.